Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at the reduction formula So the first question I would like to pose to you is how do we get to the various quadrants? So if we're looking at the first quadrant, we refer to that as an angle called theta. Once we jump into the second quadrant, remember that this point here is our 90 degrees. We start at 0, 90, 180, 270, and we return to 360. So in my diagram, I just want to put that down for you, so you get a clear understanding. We're starting at 0, then we move on to 90, there's our 180 marker, there's our 270, and a revolution gives us 360. So in quadrant 1, we're talking about theta. When we move to quadrant 2, we refer to quadrant 2 as 180 minus theta. Jumping to quadrant 3, we look at 180 plus theta. And if we are in quadrant 4, that's 360 minus theta. Now, some of you will also say that we can get into quadrant 2 by referencing 90 plus theta. And that's where we talk about co-ratios in the next slide. So... The point of this is to understand that in each quadrant, we have the trig ratios having different signs. So if we look at, remember from your cast diagram, which I want to write down now, C, A, S, T. And if we remember our cast diagram, A for all, and S is for sine, T for tan, and C for cos. So all ratios in quadrant one are positive. In quadrant two, only sine is positive. In quadrant three, tan is positive. And in quadrant four, cos is positive. So as an example, if they give us an angle called 240 degrees, to get to 240 degrees using reduction formula, we know 240 degrees has to be between 180 and 270, which now takes us into quadrant 3. So we can break this angle up into 180, according to the reduction formula, which we see here, plus 60. And it all depends which trig ratio we're using. So if I, for an example, say this was sine, then we know that in quadrant 3, only 10 is positive, so this changes to negative sine 180 plus 60, which we then can reduce down to minus sine 60. So keep the point of co-ratios. We can also reference the, co uh, the re reduction formula involving co-ratios. 90 plus minus theta, cos 90 plus minus theta, and sine 70 plus minus theta, together with cos 270 plus minus theta. So if we look at the first one, remember when we are using co-ratios, we are talking about complementary ratios. And the complement of sine is cos, and the complement of cos is sine. So three questions we want to look at when we have ratios involving either reduction or co-ratios. Which quadrant? And in that quadrant, is it positive or negative? And then we change it if it is a co-ratio like 90 plus minus, it changes to the co-ratio. So we look at the first one, cos 90 plus theta. So that's 90. And the plus t, theta takes us into quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, we know that cos is negative. So we change it to negative. And the co-ratio of cos is sine. So the cos of 90 plus theta will change to minus sine theta. Let's try another one. If you got 270 minus theta, 
first question we ask ourselves is where is 270 minus theta? And that will take us into quadrant 3. So there's our 270. And minus theta going back will take us into quadrant 3. And there we have it that in the third quadrant sine is negative and the co-ratio of sine is cos. So we got sine of 270 minus theta. Looking at another one, you can work with 270 plus theta. And if you following me now, here's our 270. We add a theta, we're into quadrant 4. And remember in quadrant 4, cos is positive, And the co-ratio of cos is sine, so it becomes a positive sine theta. So before I jump there, that's just to look at the co-ratios, 90 plus minus or 270 plus minus. So let's now go into some past paper questions. The first question we have is we're looking at to simplify sine 90 minus x. So I'm going to work directly with the question. The first thing you want to ask yourself a question is in which quadrant is 90 minus x? And I also have on my right, as you can see, that in quadrant 1, we refer to that as here's our quadrant 1 with theta. But remember, we can also refer to quadrant 1 as 90 subtract theta. So this is actually in quadrant 1. And in quadrant 1, sine is positive. So that will reduce... Because it's a co-ratio, sine must change to a positive cos theta. The next one we look at is cos of 180 plus x. And if we look at 180 plus x, and you can see that we have 180 plus x is sitting in quadrant 3. And in quadrant 3, cos is negative. I'm going to use a bracket. So we have quadrant 3. And cos is negative, it's a reduction formula, so the trig ratio doesn't change. We keep it as cos x. Then we have a plus sign. We got tan x. Okay, so remember that from grade 11, we should have learned that tan is also sine over cos. So we can express tan as sine x over cos x times, we have a cos x there. And we have the last one, which is a negative angle, x minus 80. So the quick way, whenever you deal with negative angles, and I just want to show you this down here, is just to add 360. And if we add 360, 360 minus 180 will give you sine of 180 plus x. And that is sitting in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, sine is negative. So that will become a minus sine x. So I'm going to put it over 1 so we could work with it. And returning to the first part of the question, a positive times a negative gives you a negative. Cos times cos will give you cos squared x. And then we have, on the other side, we can cancel of cos x and cos x. So on the top, we have a positive times a negative. Give me a minus sine squared x. We can pull out negative as a common factor, and that will give us minus cos squared plus sine squared. Or we can rewrite it if we want. Sine squared x plus cos squared x. And that works out to be negative 1. So we have simplified that to negative 1. Okay, we're looking at the next question that we want to simplify. And we have 540 minus x. So anything over 360 we can take out. So we can say 540 minus 360, and that'll actually give us 180. So we can change this 540 into 180. So we now have sine of 180 minus x, which is sitting in the second quadrant. And remember, if we look on our right, there's it right there. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. So we end up with positive sine x. 
And if you're not sure, if you're not with me, you can always quickly draw your cast diagram. I also have it on the top showing you details in which quadrants we are working with in terms of the positive and negative. We look at the second one, sine of nine, sine of minus x. I told you just add 360, and that gives us 360 minus x. That takes us into the fourth quadrant. And if we look into the fourth quadrant, we see that sine is negative. So we end up with a minus sine x. So we have a negative sign there separating that. And then I'm going to change the color. So now we have 180 minus x. That's 180 minus x is in the second quadrant. And cos in the second quadrant is negative. And we look at the next one. Sine of 90 plus x. 90 plus x is in the second quadrant. But remember 90 plus x, that's a co-ratio. In the second quadrant, sine is positive, and the co-ratio of sine is cos x. So that's what we have, we're have. we looking at at the moment. And we're going to now simplify this. Positive times negative is a minus sine squared x. And a negative times negative is a positive cos squared x. Now don't be tempted to put negative 1. Because even if you factorize it, you're going to end up with minus into sine squared x minus cos squared x, which is actually not equal to 1. So we will keep it as it is. If you're in grade 12, then we can use the double angle formula to simplify that. Okay, we're going to our next question. And now we see we are given some angles. All right, we now have angles represented by numerical values. So we're going to rewrite all these angles. If we look at 120 as an example to start off with. First angle there is 120. We're going to rewrite 120 using reduction formula. And that will give us a 180 minus 60. So there's our first one. We can rewrite 120 with 180 minus 60. 210 we can rewrite as 180 plus 30. And then 315 we can write, rewrite as, because that 315 is sitting in the fourth quadrant. So that's a good marker to have 0, 90, 180. If you're wondering how I'm getting there quickly, I know 315 has to fall in the fourth quadrant. And my angle formula is 360 minus. So we can rewrite that with 360 minus 45. 27 is an acute angle. We're going to leave it coming to the bottom. 63 is an accurate angle. We're going to leave it for now. And then for 540, immediately we can take out 360. And if we say 540 minus 360, that will give us 8, 180 degrees. And this we can rewrite as 180. Okay, so we're now going to use our reduction formula. The first one, we got sine 180 minus 60. That is in your first quadrant. That will turn to 60. The second one is 180 plus 30. That's a third quadrant. And then we're going to get minus cos 30. Just to be safe, I'm going to put a bracket in. The next one is 360 minus 45. 10 in the fourth quadrant is negative, so that will become our num minus 10, 45. And then we got cos 27. And then in the bottom, we got sine 63. Now we're going to use co-ratios. So you will note that 63, in terms of a co-ratio, is 90 minus 27. So we can change sine to cos of 90 minus 63 which gives us the 27 and then the last one is cos 180 which we're going to leave and then you'll notice immediately that your cos 27 and your cos 27 cancels off so next what we're going to do here is we're going to use our special angle okay we're now going to use our special angles and you can use your calculator as well, as long as you show you're working. So the first one for sine 60, 
our special angle is root 3 over 2 and then we got minus cos 30 and cos 30 is also root 3 over 2 as sine 60 and cos 30 are complementary or co-ratios and then we have 1045 that's a famous 1045 which we're giving you a negative one and in the bottom we have cos 180 sorry 1045 is one but it's negative because of the negative sign in front of it and then in the bottom we have cos of 180 and cos 180 you can use a graph as well to do this is actually negative one and you'll notice our negative ones will cancel off and then we have negative root three times root three on the top the numerator is giving you three and two times two is four so using our special angles we have simplified that thank you